So in this lecture, we're going to cover some of the more advanced types of questions, types of queries we want to ask from our data. So just looking at the PARS dashboard again, if we look at player and we look at the position, what if we wanted to ask the question, return all players that are either center forward or center back? Now, there are a couple of ways of answering this question using PARS. You might think the first method would be something similar to what we ran before. So, where's the position? Here we go. Let me just copy and paste that back into a new example. Let's get rid of those. So you might think you could answer you could answer with something like this center forward. Which way did it play? Did they spell center? Ah, correct way. Center back. Yeah. Okay. So you might think that this is how you would run it, but let's have a look to see what this prints out. So if we just did position center forward, oh, and actually, I want to log the number of results returns so players length okay let's run this okay so 76 so there are 76 players that are center forward okay so how many players are center back 95 so if, if I had both of those constraints I would expect the answer to be somewhere in the region of 171 something like that but if I run it, you can see it's actually 95 again. That's because with pars, if you are to repeat the same constraint on the same column name, it just ignores the previous one. So you can only really have one constraint on one column name per class type. So the way we can solve this in pars is using another constraint called contained in. So let me just write it out first and I'll explain it in a second. Okay, here we go. Let's get rid of that. Okay, let's get some space here as well. Okay. So what contained in does is it returns any results where the position contains either the center back or the center forward. Yeah, where the position is contained in one of the values in the array that you pass in there. So now if we hit clear and then run, oh, it's 100, and that's because we have the limit. So let's set the limit to 1,000. Clear, hit run again. There we go, 171, which was equal to the number of center backs and number of center forwards before. So that's contained in. Now, with a lot of these, with all of these constraints, really, you, we have kind of the positive and the negative. So not contained in returns the opposite. So it returns all of the players whose position is not in this list. So if I now run that, there you go, three, five, six. That's kind of about the, the size that I would expect. So to solve this above problem, we needed to add a limit because, well, we can only get up to a thousand players. Well, by default, we only get a hundred players returned, but we can only really have a thousand players returned. So what if, what if the number of players was more than a thousand? Then it would only ever give us one thousand maximum, and we'd have to start paging through to find out if we've got more data. So to solve that, pars lets us also just do a count. So if we wanted to, so let me just copy and paste this here. So let me get rid of this limit. So if all I want to know is the count, I can do q.count. Okay, and that just returns the total number here, and I can print it out here. Let me uncomment this so you can compare. So with this version, what happens is the server side returns all of the players and all of the expensive data that for all of those pairs across the network back to you and we're just ignoring all of that data and we're just counting the number of items that are returned. That's just a really expensive way of getting a count. A cheaper way of getting a count is just to tell the server, hey look, all I want is a count. Then all the server is going to do is it's going to send you back just the number. 
Not the full data set, just the number. And that's what the second one does. So if I now hit clear and run, so, so there you go, you can see both of these return the same number. It's just the second one is gonna be a lot quicker and faster to return. So seeing that we were running count in the previous example, if you are actually running a count, just use the count function.